Okay, for this next tutorial, we're going to make some crayons using cylindrical mapping. So let's go ahead and start out by creating a cylinder from our shelf of polygon primitives. I can drag and then lift the height. And let's use the attribute editor to adjust the number of sections. I think we're only going to need eight. Subdivisions on the cap, I think we'll need three. And that's good. We'll close that. Now let's look at this object. I have a little bit of a cold today. I hope you don't mind. To create this crayon shape, it's going to be really easy. I just need to go into face mode and using my lasso select tool I can select all the faces on the top of the cylinder. Now back to my regular select tool I can deselect all of the faces except the very center octagon. Now if I click W for my move tool I can lift up on the y-axis and create the tip of that crayon. I'll try to adjust the proportions a little bit. Maybe I go to edge and select this loop of edges, scale it up a little bit so that that rim isn't quite as abrupt. And I want to make this crayon a little bit skinnier. So I'll go to object mode and do a non-uniform scale to make it a little thinner. And if I want to adjust the tip there, I can select certain vertices, lift those up, and that looks about right. Back in object mode, it appears that I still have some hard edges there on my cylinder. So let me go ahead and select those edges, and we'll go to normals, soften edge. Now if I go to object mode, I can see crayon is fairly smooth. At the tip, I might want to select my edges there, double click to get the whole loop, normals, Harden edge. Now I have a flat tip on that crayon and I'm going to scale it down a little bit. Now if I really want this crayon to be as efficient as possible, I can select this vertex, go to my move tool, hold down V to snap it to a corner there, and then I can select those two vertices and merge them together. Now I have a couple of extra edges in here that I don't really need. I can delete those. And I have a minimal number of polygons there on the top now. Also on the bottom, don't forget, I've got extra geometry here. I can select those loops by double clicking the edges and go to Edit Mesh, Delete Edge, Slash Vertex, or Control Delete. That'll get rid of those edges and their vertices. And I can do the same thing I did before. Hold down V, snap this vertex to the side, merge them together, and delete a couple of those extra edges. Now I have just a few polygons on the bottom, and I think my crayon is about ready to receive texture. Wait, one more thing. These edges in here probably look better if I sharpen those. Harden edge, and I think this tip here could probably be a little bit sharp. Let's shrink that down. Now that I'm finished getting the perfect geometry, I can begin to add texture. Let's right click on the object, go to the drop down list and select assign new material, and we'll make a Lambert as we usually do. Under the color channel, we'll select file, and then we'll go looking for the crayon texture that I've created. Here it is, crayon blue. Let's start with that one. Now that doesn't look right at all, does it? Well, that's because we have to map this crayon. So I'll select the object and all the faces because we need to map on faces, not objects. And I'll select cylindrical mapping to tell Maya that I want those faces mapped in a cylindrical fashion. Now if I look at it, that doesn't look right either. Something's wrong. The textures are stretched and they're not oriented the right way. Let's select that object again and we'll take a look at the UV texture editor. This is how my UVs are laid out. I'm going to move this window where I can see both my crayon in 3D perspective view and my UV texture editing window at the same time. Now I can go to this button, move UV shell tool, and I can select that shell and move it around. You see what happens in the 3D view. I can rotate it using these buttons here and move it into position. Now that's getting closer. The lettering is oriented properly. It's just that the label isn't in the right position. So what if I click the R button to scale and I scale in one direction along the V axis and I look at the crayon in my 3D view. Is that getting better? I might need to move it from side to side a little bit. There we go. And I might need to scale it again, but this time in the V direction. That looks about right. If I want to be able to view this a little bit better, I can go to the lighting drop down menu in my viewport and choose use flat lighting. Now the shading is gone and I can more clearly see the textures on there. Let me just adjust these UVs a little bit more. And it's mapped okay, but normally if I wanted a specific part of the map there on the back end of this crayon, I could do a planar projection mapping on just those faces. Or in this case, automatic mapping might work better. That's this button right here. Now in my UV texture editor window, I can see an octagon. I can scale that down and then make sure it's all the way over here on the dark blue. And I think I'm done, so let's close that window, go back to object mode, look at our object. But there is one little problem here. Do you see this? There's something weird happening there. It looks like the label is getting cut off there at that polygon. That's a seam that's not matching up in my UV texture editor. What I can do in this case is just move my UV shell a little bit further so that I can cover that entire label. Then I'll be able to see it without it getting cut off. I can also scale my label up to the full height of my texture in the UV window. And then it should tile pretty well. Now let's close that window and we'll look at our object and see is this what we want it to look like. I think that's pretty good. It's just a lot bigger than the other crayons. So let's go ahead and scale that down in object mode. And I'd like to make more than just one crayon, so let's duplicate that. In fact, let's duplicate it a few times. And we'll make each of these a different color by creating a new material assigned to each. I'll just right click on one of them, choose assign new material from the drop down, make a Lambert, go to color, 
file, browse my manila folder here, and we'll try to find crayon green. Open that, and it's automatically mapped and assigned just like the other texture. Assign a new material, Lambert color, file, browse, crayon red. Double click that and assign a new material, Lambert color, file, browse, crayon violet. Select the next one, assign new material, Lambert color, file, browse, crayon yellow. That's my last color. I didn't make an orange texture, but hey, you probably know how to do that. So there is my set of crayons. Let's rotate them around and I'll move them off to the side.